All right, guys, how are you today? I'm gonna go ahead and get started a couple minutes early because it usually takes me a couple minutes to get set up uh, as far as moving things between the, uh, the group and the Facebook profile. Today we're gonna be studying this, um, this ombre striped moon. I'm actually only gonna paint one version, but I'll show you how to, how to sketch out a second version just that you, way you always have the, the variety that I'm used to, to giving you guys. So let me take a minute to share this on my profile. Mm -hmm. And then we'll jump right in. This is a really easy one. It does take some time to get things all um, sketched out. Um, but once again, like, uh, like anything else, um, I like having the planning because it feels like it gives me more freedom um, to, to paint more free, freely later on. So we're gonna take it a little bit of time to get it set up. And then once we get this all sketched out and set up, then the lines actually go pretty quickly. The good thing is, so I'm trying to see if I have something here, yeah. I don't know if you guys did this one with me, but the difference here is that when it comes to a piece like this, you see all these overlapping. The problem with that is in the game with these kinds of <laughs> the game with these kinds of pieces is that um, you uh, you have to wait for everything to dry completely. Now sometimes I game it a little bit by uh, using a hair dryer. Um, but in this case, because we have spaces between the lines, that means we don't have to wait for things to dry before moving to the next step. That is when things can move a lot faster in watercolor, so this will be a relatively short lesson today, uh, which is good because usually these run pretty long and <laughs> sometimes I feel bad for you guys. Uh, all right, so we'll go ahead and measure up and get started. As I always do, I'm going to split it out into two sides, but I am just going to paint one for now. I just want to give you two different ways of setting this up to make it fun. All right, so one of the things I told you to get in the supplies um, mostly just because it makes things easier. So while I measure this out, one of the things I want you to get is I want you to get two things that are round. If you're only doing the only doing a bigger piece with me, just do this. If you want to follow along, I'm also going to do a second piece where I go one, two, three smaller pieces on the page. So as you can see, I've got what is a jam jar, and I've got a little bowl from IKEA that I usually eat my oatmeal in for what it's worth. The reason I do this is because it's a lot easier to trace a circle without needing a compass. And it's usually a pretty standard width, which is also great to work with. For example, this little bowl, I don't know if you can tell, but it is 12 centimeters. I'm pushing it over the edge a little bit so you can see. So that's a nice standard set of measurements to work with. The jam jar isn't quite as neat. I tried this earlier, it's about six and a half but still that's something I can, I can work with. So I'll show you how to sketch out uh, three moons over top of each other if you wanna add more content to the page, but I'm just, going to pull, I'm just going to paint through one big moon with you right now with this awesome teal color. Like I love green, I love teal, I'm a sucker for all these kinds of shades. So, but once again, you can do whatever color you want. As long as you just start with a very strong value, a lot of paint, and then just keep thinning it down as you go to get that nice ombre effect. I'll walk you through it, it doesn't take too long. First off, let's get our page squared up and ready for you. Once again, this does take a few minutes to get set up. I'll come back here and show you kind of what that looks like. For this one big piece, you need to find the center of the page. We need to put the bowl or whatever round object you have in the center of your page. You're gonna have it be the same distance from each side of the page. So we're gonna figure out where the center is and go from there. So once again, I'm gonna cut my page in half because I'm gonna show you a different way to go about this if you want to. This is about 12 inches, okay. Go here. So that's my two halves, one half, two half. Da -da -da. Um, and now I need to find the halfway mark for both sides. All right, so the page is about nine inches tall. 
Nine divided by two, if your kid's listening, what is that? It's four and a half. And once again, I am not always good at doing math in my head. <laughs> so bear with me if I don't do it right. All right, so now this will be our halfway point. Great. Get that measured out. And I say this in all the lessons, I use a hard, I use a hard pencil. Um, if I do something like with a, uh, I don't have my mechanical pencil with me, so. But my mechanical pencil makes a very hard line. It's very dark, which is good when you're writing notes, but you don't want that in a piece like this because it's hard to erase later. This is a very hard pencil, which means it makes a very light line, easy to erase. If you've watched me before, you've heard me say this pretty much every video, but it still stands true. <laughs> My poor boyfriend has been <laughs> relegated to the, the porch for the time being, um, but that's okay. We're figuring out how to make it work being inside together a lot. One thing we are doing a lot of right now, we are doing a lot of puzzles. Um, we are about to finish our second one for and this one is 2,000 pieces. So, once again, we're just finding the center point of the piece. And I'm drawing out two pieces for you. All right. So I need to figure out how that goes in the center. Now, the way that I found works best for figuring this out is I need to give myself guidelines at these cross points. So what do we know? We know that this bowl is 12 centimeters wide. Great. All right. So we want to give ourselves guide points on this page. Get that. This is an eraser, by the way, in case you don't know. It's great because you can mold it to erase in small spots or you can flatten it out and really erase the heck out of it with a big surface area. You can also see my, uh, <laughs> my uh, I think this used to hold strawberries maybe, where I keep my, uh, my paints. Um, I promise to share a picture with you later about that. Okay, squirrel, back on topic. 12 centimeters wide, okay, great. So we wanna make reference points for ourselves that are 12 centimeters wide on each side. And that will tell us where we need to center our bowl. Okay. So that one goes there, that one goes there. Those are the edge points right there, six centimeters on each side. Same goes for here. I'm trying very hard to not get my head in the frame because guys, my bangs are growing out right now and it's kind of a hot mess. You don't need to be seeing that. All right. 12 centimeters, 12 centimeters, great. Okay. And now, the glass is both helpful and not helpful. But once you have all of the sides, all the dashes lined up along here, I will try to hold it up so you can see. You can see how I've got, you know, I want, to, want it to meet that line. I want it to meet this line. I want it to be inside all of those lines. So, you get that puppy lined up. Here, here. All right, guys, I think we're good to go. And then you just hold it down and trace a nice circle around there. I'm going around twice because I know it's a light line. And voila, we have a centered perfect circle. Ta-da! Okay. So, something I like about this is this bowl, and which may work for you, is that it's an exact centimeter count. I know it's exactly 12 centimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to break this out into 12 separate centimeters. That's what I'm doing with the stripes here. The stripes here in this picture are actually one centimeter apart as well. Um, what you can also do is if your circle is not in a nice, uh, measurement like that, you can always just keep cutting in half. So if this is six centimeters, draw a line in three. Okay, now it's three, now it's one and a half. Um, you know, things of that nature. You can have different strategies. Cutting it in half over and over again is an easier way to get the stripes of the same size if that's more um, your speed or what you're working with. Okay, sorry, my, my jam lid is noisy. All right, so. This is the one we're going to paint. I'll come back and put in the stripes in a second. I also wanna show you a second way to deal with this. I wanna use this jam jar and do three 
moons right here. I'm gonna end up doing them in different colors. I'm not gonna paint them with you right now because that'll make the video extra long. And we don't have to do that today because I'm not trying to <laughs> time it with extra, extra drying layers. So once again, we're gonna figure out how big this jam jar is and do the exact same thing we did over here. So six and a half is how wide this puppy is. I have to think about that. So that would be 3.25 to get that on the center line over here. All right, six and a half. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. Because I'm gonna be having these all in a row, I'm just gonna draw that line all the way up for now. It's easier to just put this reference line all the way up and go from there. So this is gonna be my outside reference line for that jam jar. All right, how are we doing with that line? Is that pretty straight? Yeah. So, no matter where I put this jam lid, it should stay inside those lines, see? Now we just gotta figure out where to put the top lines. So, once again, it's six and a half centimeters wide. We gotta figure it out for the middle as well. Uh, so six and a half, 3.25, one, two, and a little bit. Okay. All right. There's our reference line. Now we'll go ahead and draw once we get that sucker centered. Actually, I need to turn this over. Now something, if you are using a lid, a word of caution, make sure you find the right lid. Here's where I say this. I almost went in and tried to get this jar of peanut butter. As you can see, it's got these very handy serrations, which is great when you're trying to open the jar. However, if you're trying to draw a smooth circle, we don't want it. So something I found out is that at the bottom here, it has the little irregularities of my jam jar. Up top is nice and smooth. So I'm gonna put this smooth side down. That way I get a nice regular circle shape. There, there. There, okay. Pushing it down. Getting the circle. One, two, voila. We have a smaller centered moon. Now, I want to figure out where to put this so that it's in the same place here. All I'm gonna do is gonna find the center of these white spaces, and that should center these suckers up, which is what we want. So this white space is about eight centimeters. So I'm gonna put this four centimeters down. centimeters for that center mark. Now, since remember these are 3.2 and a half, that is going to be our top mark. Right there, nice and cozy. So 3.2 and a half from that center line. One, two, half. And there you go. Now you know where to place your jam jar lid. On either side, take that moon and once again, line it up with that top mark I've got, line it up between the, the stripes I've made. And then I'll have Pretty good circle, except for the point where I hit my finger. <laughs> oh well. And now we'll take this one. Get that puppy lined up. Don't hit my finger this time. All 
All right. So this is another way to draw this out. You can do three moons, three different colors, just to make it look more interesting. Um, so basically, do what we're gonna do over here, just in three different moons, three different colors, and it makes it more interesting. Groups of threes are very pleasing in a composition. Uh, from a composition standpoint, it's very pleasing. Um, in uh, just, yeah, composition, I guess it's enough of a standpoint to tell you. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna come back to this big boy and leave this guy alone. If you sketch that out, great. You can come back to it later. If not, let's pick up where we left off with our big moon. All right, so right now, we're just trying to draw these lines right here, okay? That way we have guidelines for when we're drawing or uh, painting our moon in. So, once again, I picked a bowl that was 12 centimeters across, so I'm going to do one centimeter for each line. Once again, this does take a little bit of time. This isn't the most interesting part of the video, which I understand, um, but this is what will give us clean lines and a good design later. It just takes a little bit of preparation, and even if you're a beginner, you can definitely handle this. Reset. And I actually want to give myself a little bit of a reference point up here for some of these stripes. Sometimes it's hard to make sure the, the lines stay straight because the, the ruler can wiggle just a little bit sometimes and make them crooked. I'm actually going to measure from this center line again and give myself a second point to draw these lines through just to try and make sure that everything stays consistent. All right, let's start the thrilling work of measuring these suckers out. Now the way I have things set up over here on the right is what's gonna be the, the dark part of your painting. So the lines over here, you can get a little, it doesn't matter how dark you draw your line on this side is what I'm saying. Anyways. Um, but when you get to this side, when it's that light, as soon as you paint over it, you will not be able to erase the pencil. So the deal with that is we're going to go back at the end and make sure that these lines over here are very, very light. That way they don't come through because you can see how transparent the paint is at this point. So we will get there. But for now, let's just pencil in the lines. I'm going to get the boring part over with so we can get to the fun part. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys know that I really like um, ink and watercolor. So I have a tendency to, <laughs> I really can't demonstrate it here in <laughs> a small amount of time. Um, but I, I ink out very elaborate, usually florals or landscapes uh, in very tiny pen uh, and then go back in and add the paint. And I admit when I go through that process, I am impatient to get to the painting point. So I'm gonna keep this rolling. stripes for our moon. I'm actually going to go in and erase some of these here in the middle because we don't need that guideline anymore. As we paint over it, especially in the darker colors, it won't matter, you won't really see them. But like I said, so this is pretty dark. We don't really need this to be that dark, so I'm going to go back over it with a, an eraser and lighten up especially this half because I don't want these lines to show. So we also don't need these lines. And you can erase these later. Sometimes I erase these now because when I get to the very end, I get excited and I have the temptation of erasing too fast. And I can't tell you how many times I've hit eraser into a, um, hi Carrie, how are you today? 
I can't tell you how many times um, I've dipped an eraser in a wet spot and <laughs> actually ruined a, a piece of the painting, which sucks. So, so here's another thing you can do. So we have these straight lines and there is something else you can do. This is something I've covered before. I'll give you the same warning I always do. If you do it right, you can use painter's tape. I use painter's tape because it uh, you can have more control over it. It's less likely to tear. This is just the same thing you use in your house when you're painting your room. There are painters, there are, you know, professional artist tapes. I haven't used those and this usually works pretty well for me. However, because this is cold pressed paper, it's not completely smooth. So here's the, the danger in that. If you really rub it down well into the surface, I usually use the, the, the smooth flat uh, opposite end of my paintbrush. You can usually get lucky. I'll show you a point where I got lucky on a different piece where the tape pulled up nicely. Hang on a second while I find it. For example, I did this rainbow piece. And the tape here, it peeled up very nicely and left a very clean line. I was very careful to push that tape into the paper. Now here's what I'm gonna show you as a possible danger of that. There is a possibility that, especially since the paper is not completely flat, if you don't get it in there or the paint is too wet, can you see that? Where the, the paint seeped under the edge of the tape through the nooks and crannies of the paper, that is a potential danger. So this is why I tend to avoid that as much as possible and try and freehand straight lines. But if you want to take the risk and you feel good about really smoothing that into the paper, you may, that may work for you. So, but that's why I don't do that here, but you can try that. Once again, this is not a hard one to repeat. So you can always, so you can always uh, do this a couple of times. Something I've learned, because as you can see, I always make a couple of prep pieces to make sure I know best how to explain these pieces to you. Um, the more I repeat these, the better my technique gets. So if you did this the first time and you feel discouraged, uh, don't worry, just keep trying. All right, you probably can barely see what I have now, but that's actually what I want. All right, so. We now have 12 beautiful centimeter wide stripes and we are trying to get this effect. So here's something that we're going to do. We're gonna use wet on dry for the first half and then wet on wet in the second. And here's what I mean. You can see I have it broken out right here, which, which half is which. Um, now here's the difference. Um, if you are doing wet on wet, um, it tends to make the color lighter. If you have more water, you're diluting it more, you have less paint, therefore it makes a lighter color. So that's what we're doing in the second half to make sure things are as light as possible. More water means less color, means lighter color. For wet on dry, that's what we're doing on the other side. It means that we are putting the paint directly on the paper without wetting it first, um, because that's what wet and wet is. We'll wet the stripe first with clean water and then put the paint in. Wet on dry, we put the paint right on the paper. So those are the differences. But of course, since this has less water, it will be a stronger color. So, all right. So the, one, the color that I've chosen is this really lovely teal color. Um, something you guys have probably seen me pull up before. Is you don't have to have like a huge, like so this is only a fraction of course of all the paints I have. You don't have to have a whole bunch of paints. All you gotta do is you take the paints that you do have like I've got here, which hopefully you can see. I've got warm and cool versions of each color and then black and brown up here at the top of my palette. Cool yellow, warm yellow, cool blue, warm blue, cool red, warm red, cool green, warm green. So what you can do is you can make a color chart. This is something I should do a separate video on just because I, I mention it so much. It's not hard to do and that's part of why I'm hesitant to make a video. All, you, all you're doing is making a chart showing what happens when you blend these two colors together. So for example, I knew I wanted to make this kind of color, but I need to figure out how to make that color because obviously it's not here in my basic set of colors. So what do I do? If I go back, if I make a color chart from the colors I have, I can see what two colors mix together for about what I'm looking for. And I found out that this one 
right here was about what I wanted. And this color, if you can see, it's a mixture of my cobalt blue, my warm blue, and my phthalo green, my green, my cold green. So I realized this is the color I want to use, and I was able to quickly reference my sheet to see what combination would get me what I want. So if I mix this color and this color, I get this color. So just as a color mixing suggestion. All right, so because this is a slightly whoop, bigger piece, um, you can use um, a bigger brush. Hi, Anne, how are you doing? Um, in order to fill this in, I you can use a flat brush. I tend to not do that. It may help you as far as it comes to uh, catching that line, making it nice and straight. However, when you get to the curve, flat brushes are kind of hard to work with. In my experience, the bristles kind of shift even if you use them on the corner. I like the control I get from the uh, the round brushes where it has like that, that, uh, that you know, that belly up here is what they call it, and that point. That's what I want, that's the precision I want. Now honestly, something I'm gonna do now going forward is I'm gonna tip the page um, like this, um, because this honestly is more comfortable for me. It's easier for me to draw a straight line this way than it would be for me to try and draw a straight line like this. That's gonna be your preference. You don't have to hold it straight like this. I'm just showing you how it works for me. All right, so something that I've learned is that basically do the stripes in sets of two. So the first two we're gonna do about the same strength. So you wanna get a very strong amount of paint and you may even want to uh, go over it with a second layer later after it's completely dry, which would strengthen the color. Now all I want you to do on this first one is just follow the pencil lines and get a nice strong color. Fill in that last stripe on the circle, or first stripe, whatever you want to call it. I guess this is first. Get a nice, strong color. You've heard me say this before, if you've watched before, watercolor does tend to dry 30% lighter. Uh, that's the opposite of acrylic. Acrylic dries um, darker. So don't be afraid to add a little extra. All right, so now we have this first shape. And honestly, I'm gonna move to a smaller brush because even though this one fills really nicely, I want more control that comes with a smaller brush. So bear with me while I switch. Now, at this point, I'm going to follow very closely along the edge right here without touching this. If you break that water barrier, it will bleed into your other stripe, and that's not what you want. If you don't feel confident, something that I taught um, yesterday, yesterday I did a rainbow, which had a similar concept of this, these split, the, the white space between the lines. If you don't feel comfortable going straight to the next stripe, which I'm going to show you how to do right now, then skip over to the third stripe and dilute a little bit. And that's what I did yesterday, mostly because I knew that there would be some kids watching because it'd be it's a more child fun design. So I went red, yellow, blue instead. So if you want, you can skip this second layer and go to the third. I, however, am going to soldier on very carefully. Follow that line. And I want to use just as much pigment on this one. And by that, I mean I want the color to be just as strong. Once again, I'm using a smaller brush, still a round brush, just a little one. Um, I need to work a little bit harder to make sure the paint gets in there, but it gives me more control. Of course, a smaller brush means smaller tip, which means more precision. What I may do is use the big brush, bigger brush later to really add and help add the color in. But right now I'm just making sure I keep the lines where they need to be. So I am coming 
just shy of the previous stripe. And coming right up to that next pencil line. Okay. And I'm gonna add a little more paint with the bigger brush. Cause it's, cause while I have more precision with the smaller brush, it obviously can't hold as much water or paint. So if I want that bigger effect, I need to bring in the big guns. We are just going to keep using the same color that you have or that you mix. We're just going to keep adding water to it and we're going to keep diluting it two stripes at a time. Now right now we're still doing wet on dry. So remember the second half of this circle, we're going to put clean water onto the stripe first and then add the paint because that will further dilute what we're doing and that's what we want. But for these first six stripes, we're just going to keep doing wet on dry. We're not going to wet the stripe first. We're going to put the paint directly onto the dry paper. So once again, you can always use some scratch paper to test, you know, what, what your shade is to make sure it's the right thing. Um, if you're feeling fancy, you can try and just do it right there in the stripe. If you work while it's wet, you can get away with it. Let's see if we can get away with it. But all you're doing is lightening the exact same color that you have. All you're doing is adding a little more water every couple of stripes in order to get that lighter effect. Okay, I think that one's all right as far as dilution. As you can see, it's just a little bit lighter, not a whole lot. I may add a little bit more actually. But we're just trying to get that ombre, 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 maybe, um, transition going for us. That's okay. Just smoothing out the line right here. Okay. You don't want to fuss with it too much unless it's still really wet. Once it starts to dry, if you try and put anything else in, it gets funky. Now, if you want, you can also, you know, do color mixing, but we're just trying to keep it simple for now. All right, like I said, we're gonna do two stripes at a time, the same technique. So we're gonna keep the same level of dilution the same level of clear water added to the paint you already mix for this one right here. Once again, wet on dry. Coming right up against that previous stripe and then bringing it all the way down to the next pencil line. And just following the grid lines you made for yourself earlier. So then, if you do a little bit of planning, You can absolutely have more freedom later because you're confident about your dimensions, you're confident about your strategy. It all just takes a little bit of planning. So. Alright. Okay. And 
this again if you feel like it needs a little more pigment you can drop it in but try to do it only when it's still this wet this super shiny because if you try and do it later it will have things like back runs it'll it won't dry evenly and watercolor when it doesn't dry evenly it, it leaves marks um, which once again you can play around with that uh, but if that's not what you want, if you want it to be super uniform, then you don't do that. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, four stripes down. Eight to go. So, now we want to add even more water to our pigment. We're still doing wet on dry. Again, if you want, you can always take scrap paper and see if that's about where you want it to be. Or you can just try and make sure you get it right on here because the good thing is you can always just add a little bit more water. Um, and here we go. Just make sure that's large enough. I might add a little more water here. Just to make sure. So this layer and the next layer is gonna go. Still doing wet on dry. And also make sure that you start from one end of the circle. Try not to start from the middle of the circle. Once again, watercolor, if you... The strategy here is you want to drag the, the wet from one end to the other. You don't want to be managing two ends of of wet edges because if an edge gets too dry, once again, drying is super important and watercolor will show if things did not dry evenly. So make sure that you start from one end and work to the other rather than going from the middle and trying to manage both sides. Just from a smoothness and perspective, a drying properly perspective. All right. Let's keep this rolling. Once again, here's our last stripe wet on wet. Same as the stripe we just did. Once again, once we get to this point, it's it's pretty mechanical. That's the beauty of it. We planned out the painting well. So now all we have to worry about is getting the color in the right spots. We kind of made our own coloring book for ourselves. Like this had more green in it when I put it on there. It's actually something I like about watercolor. Like if the mixing is a little funky, you get variations like that. I like it. Um, once again, that's something you have to accept if you're working with watercolor, is that you really can only control it up to a point. Um, and you just have to enjoy the things that you can't control about it. All right. So we got six stripes. We did these wet on dry, which means we put the paint directly onto the paper. I'm looking over at my stream for you guys. <laughs> it looks like you can see my eyelashes and my headband. Thankfully, I picked a cute headband and you can't see my crazy bangs. Anyways, all right. So these are gonna be darker colors because we did the wet on dry. That means there was less water to paint. Now for these, we're going to get them wet with clean water first. So something I always put in the supply description 
um, is you need to have two cups of water. I have this fancy pants artist thing, but this counts as my two cups of water. I have one for rinsing and I have another side for clean water. This is where I get all of the previous color off and this is where I get clean water to activate a new color without getting it muddied up with the last colors. So that's why I have you have two cups of water. It doesn't matter as much here except for the fact that we want there to be more water. So even though it's the same color, if we want the color to be weaker, which is what our goal is here, we want that water to be clear. All right, so just keep working through, except this time, it does hurt if you have a little bit of the pigment in there, because sometimes it's hard to see what's going on. The only way you can really tell, you know, that clear water is on your page, is that it's shiny there, um, which is sometimes a pain in the butt to, to see. So, it doesn't need to be exactly all the way to the edges. We're just trying to add something to, to get started. Okay, now, here we go, keeping it lighter. And you can see how it travels differently this way. Because it's wet, it's, um, the paint color moves differently. Because the paint color, the paint color, the paint color, let's not put an L where it doesn't belong. Paint color moves wherever the water is connected. So, so it moves differently this way. And just like before. Leave a little bit of space between this stripe and the last one. And coming right up to that new pencil line. And this is where I can really see the pencil line starting to be more noticeable. And here's another thing you can do. This is something I haven't talked about as much. If you have too much pigment or paint, you can dilute it, yes, but you can also do a thing called thirsty brush. So I just um, blotted off this brush a little bit, and once it's dry, it acts like a sponge a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and bring it up. Can you see how it, like, the water, it turns white right there? That's because the paint brush is picking up a little bit of the liquid. So if something has a little bit too much of that, you can always use that thirsty brush technique. All right, so again, we're doing another stripe the same way, same strength. Starting out with clear water, which I cannot see very well, of course. Trying to get something on there within the lines. And then here we go. Adding the pigment in now. And as you get to these last couple stripes, you're gonna see how long, how far that watercolor can go when you want it to be this light. It does not take much to get a little bit of color. It really doesn't. Actually, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and pull from the previous stripe, which feels a little dark. But once again, because it's still completely wet, it won't affect the drying. A 
once again, don't worry if you have to do multiple versions of this. I've learned that when I do these things more than one time, I get the kinks worked out. So don't feel discouraged if the first time you didn't get it right. Just keep trying. It's always much better the second time around once you're more familiar with how things work. That I can promise you. All right. And then we just keep going. Wet and wet. Clear water on this stripe. Using even less pigment here. Very small. Again, you can see why I said to lighten up the pencil marks. But yeah, I am I'm dipping this into a very diluted paint color. To get that very light color. Keep the next stripe wet first. Very light pigment. I like seeing how watercolor paint blooms when you dip it in a wet spot. Once again, if you can handle those uncontrollable bits, it's really a, a fun and vanilla thing. See how to even go back and put more paint on my brush? Very, very light. And because this next one's gonna be even lighter, I'm actually gonna come back in here and erase these lines as much as I can. While still being able to see them. Because Unlike how nicely they're covered up by the darker lines, these lines basically will just shine through no matter what. So let's take a look at that really quick. And then we're actually almost done. Alright, one second. Wet and wet. Clear water. And I'm making sure that all of my eraser bits are out of the way. Very cool. Such a tiny bit of pigment. I mean, here, let me show you. So here's what I've got. I've got a, I'm just pulling at this really, really light spot right here. That's it. And I don't think I'm gonna reload my brush. Watercolor can go a long, long way in this light of a shade.
very light. I can barely see the lines, but that's what you wanted. stripe and we will be done. I'll tell you about the next projects we've got coming up and send you on your way without keeping you here for a million years like I usually do. And then I'll go back and paint these three circles later. And I'll post pictures of the results for you guys that way you can see what it looks like. Very, very, very light color. Almost there. Very, very, very light. I'm laughing because I basically can't see where the paint is. But that is the effect that I wanted. I wanted to get as light as possible down here at the end. Ta-da! So, you can either do it like this, or you can trim it like this, however you want the stripes to go, of course. Of course, I was just painting it this way because that's easier for me when it comes to doing the straight lines. It was easier for me to hold my wrist like this than to hold it like this. Ooh, that actually feels weird just doing that. Once again, you can always plot out three circles and do this exact same process just like this. Um, I will post pictures of doing that later. If you want to find other videos right now to paint, here's some of the ones I've done recently and that are on YouTube. I did this rainbow one just yesterday and it's actually the, pretty much the same principles with the stripes that you have going on here. If you have kiddos, I've got these bumblebees here too. They're thumbprints actually. Super easy, doesn't take long to do. If you want more of a landscape, I've got these foggy trees and these uh, mountains. Both of those are on YouTube and in the group. This piece is just in the group. I'll need to redo the video before I put it onto YouTube because the, I had technical difficulties with this one. Future lessons. The lessons I have coming up. Uh, this one I'm actually excited about. The thing that I've been playing with by myself is a texture. So I've been playing with things like fern leaves, um, uh, bubble wrap. Um, I actually use like the netting from my... Uh, <laughs> The netting from my uh, bath scrunchie. I cut off a piece and threw it on here. Had a lot of fun with that. Uh, you can also use straws and stuff, so I will have a class just on texture. Another piece I will be doing in the near future, uh, next Saturday actually, is um, this piece on hand lettering and, uh, and leaves. Um, and I have other ones that I'm working on for you guys, but that aren't quite finished. If you join the group, you will stay connected and updated and be able to see all of them. All the videos that I finished now are put on the YouTube channel. The link is in the comments. If you like this, if you enjoyed this, um, please help support the, the channel and the videos. I, it does take time and materials to do this. I want to keep these free and any support you can give me is great. Um, I've got my PayPal in the comments. I've got my Etsy store if you want to buy for me. And if you're interested in doing private lessons one-on-one, -on -one, We've got Zoom calls, we can do that too. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I will keep cranking these out for you as long as we're all cooped up inside. I love making these with you and I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon, bye.